Just to answer the last question I was asked, um, how, how would I answer those patients up there? I, I would say that, that those patients up there are very lucky because 42% of the, the people seen in the services that those patients are talking about come from just five practices on the world. There are another 46 practices on the world where if you ask them those exact same questions, there's nothing to be saved in my community. They don't have one. So there is an incredibly inequitable offer on the table right now. That doesn't mean that I'm saying you should take it away from those who have. But I think there needs to be a rebalancing of what is not heard in these petitions. I don't have a walking centre to save. So there are those people's voices that aren't on those questions. Going back to the question that I've just been asked, it is yet to be fully decided right now the federations deliver the extended access hours on a pro rata basis, depending on the population size that those federations represent. I don't know whether there's any suggestion to change that, but there certainly hasn't been one from me. And those extra appointments will need to be discussed between the federations and with the commissioners about how they are distributed. It's been really clear to me from the very onset of this whole system that we should be delivering them equitably across all the nine neighbourhoods of the Wirral, and we've got to do that. So our federation has, if you go through the information that you have, you'll see that there is a balanced approach where practices across all parts of the Wirral have a, a proportion of the appointments to be delivered. From next year, there's more money for more hours, and that will increase. So you'll see an evening up as time goes by, what we've also got to remember though is that not all practices want to do this and it's been absolutely clear for me from day one that no practice should be forced into doing something it's either not able to do or doesn't want to do but practices can work together so that they can do that for all the patients in their neighbourhood and that's how English Remote Consulting is working so your practice can send your patients to the practice up the road you can deliver it and that should happen on a locality neighbourhood basis but that is a work in progress these things all have to come together, all have to work together for the system to function as a whole. In, uh, all I could say is that all of the services that our federation provide are provided in practices. Uh, we provide our services um, in 10 different practices. In fact, we have resisted significant attempts to reduce the number of practices that provide it and we will continue to increase that. But we are also aware of the fact that there is, irrespective of what the spin that can be put on, there isn't endless resource of GPs available. And I'm glad to see that the CCT has acknowledged that we should have a mixture of doctors and nurses providing these services. And in fact, from the day one of extended access, we have said that that is the right model to do and we were actually refused to give permission for us to have a multidisciplinary approach to do that. And we can probably say that we have a team of nurses, etc., who can deliver this thing. So I think extended access also does not solve the fundamental problem of GP patients wanting access to their own GP practice. It is only putting a band-aid on the situation. So this whole notion that somehow the extended access is going to resolve 80 to 100,000 people going somewhere else, there are only 37 patients will go per day, is not an appropriate assessment of the situation. It may win the argument at this meeting, but that is not actually factual. Because I think if we remove those services where people are going for low intensity cases, they, we, are, we are forcing those people to go to nowhere other than to the general hospital, to the a &E department and to make this thing fair. So I think we need to be thinking about how we design this service so that low intensity cases are delivered in the community, not just for 0 to 19, but for all patients. Thank you, Dr. Montgomery. Can we move, try to move on as quickly as we can now? So, Madam Councillor Bray, please. Um, Councillor Clements, and then we do 
12 doctors like we have in our practice. So it's not the solution for everyone, but our practice can help our neighbours. So we already do. We are open until 8 in the evening, four days a week, because Dr. McDonnell kindly does the fifth day and Saturday and Sunday. Because we are neighbours, we balance it equitably. I agree there are two federations. I agree we have different values about how something should be done. Um, and that would be a different conversation for a different day. But we're both comfortable in our own skins. We both believe in what we're doing quite passionately, as you can see. Um, but I do think that there are other alternatives than walking centres for an awful lot of what goes to walking centres. And that must be the case because there are places that don't have them. And what do those patients do there? Like they do other things. And we're not going to change behaviours. We're just going to end up with the same problem again and again and again. This is Groundhog Day getting worse and worse. And it is getting worse. And this winter could be the worst winter on record. And that's not me saying that, that's that's predictive. But again, you know, we need to deal with what comes through our doors on a daily basis. And we need to be able to be flexible enough to do that. <coughs> Dr. McConnell, do you have anything to add? I'll add to that. Um, uh, clearly, there are different philosophies about we represent uh, 25 practices, but we represent about a third of the population because we are a number of smaller practices, etc. And we clearly feel that we don't believe in just bigger is beautiful and just dissolving small practices is the future. And that is one of the reasons why we are trying to ensure that people like those, and that is what we want to do. We did, we, there was something that was said regarding that we, Dr. Fraser was eloquent about what his practice does, and we can all be eloquent about all of our practices. And I think generally practices provide excellent services. And it was also suggested that these are inequitable services. I think just to say that 20% uh, uh, of the patients at uh, many minor injury come from minimum, but 11% come from quantum medical center. 10% come from Cavendish medical center. So I think for people that remaining come with 7%. And if you actually, what the CCD did do was to tell you where the percentage of patients for the Eastern Walking Clinic come from, where the patients of patients for the Avapod Walking Center come from. So if you do an analysis of this, you will find that they do 